Yeah, and I think we'll, we'll get more into UberDoc in a minute, but I love that you also start to solve that problem for physicians that come onto your platform, right? As in making that not just half the battle of getting onto a platform, but driving people to them to subscribe to the same uh, needs and ideals. But yeah, no, I, and I love learning about your journey. But And before diving into the UberDoc solution, I would love to set the stage and foundation for the problems that you see in our healthcare system. And in particular, I think it's important for any entrepreneur to understand how the business model works within healthcare and the trade-offs they support or don't support when they're adopting one. Um, and just starting out, what are the different types of business models that exist within the healthcare industry? So, um, so healthcare is, you know, people like to say it's complicated, right? So we separate what I call medical care from healthcare. Doctors always say, well, what's so complicated? We trained for hundreds of years. We, we can treat, we, you know, we train to treat something specifically to do it well. <laughs> so that's the practice of medicine. But healthcare is different. Healthcare is the industry around it to deliver the care. And, and that's where I think sort of the rubber hits the road. So, so you, so in healthcare, you know, when you talk about it, you know, patients seeking care, you know, people talk about payers, you know, mm -hmm. how, you know, how is, how does that equation work? A patient can walk into a doctor's office. What happens? Well, how do they get to the doctor's office? Um, you know, they have to have an insurance card. Our, our entire, you know, healthcare system is based on a, a sort of a universal, universal insurance model where everyone by mandate, uh, at least, at least state by state now, not the federal mandates, not there anymore, needs to have access to health insurance or carry health insurance or they'll get a penalty. Um, so the uh, the concept of healthcare is like you can you use your insurance card. There's a third party in there that does the negotiation between the patient and the doctor, or right. the patient and the hospital. Um, and so um, and and that I mean we can talk about where all that came from, but it comes back to actually World War Two. <laughs> okay. It goes back to World War Two, and uh, and 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 uh, you know when when. Truman didn't want people to leave factories in the war. Um, they mm -hmm. put a wage freeze in. So rather than raising wages, they added benefits. And benefits, part of the benefits Got were, it. in fact, health benefits. And then after the war, um, you know, if you were too old to work or you were too poor, you didn't have a job, they created Medicare and Medicaid. Um, Truman and his wife were, were the first two, two recipients of Medicare. Um, and then the employer-based employers paying for your health care just kind of came out of that. And then it continued to grow. And as things became more complicated, more expensive and more business minded, payers started to come into the marketplace. Government subsidies continued. And then you basically have taken the equation of a doctor or patient out of we're no longer the buyer and the seller of the health care. We're the service provider. Right. And the and the patient is, in fact, you know, technically is paying, but not directly. Right. Um, and then you have this third party in between. So, so our healthcare model is not direct to buy. You don't buy your health, your, your medicine, right? You don't buy your healthcare. Uh, you, you buy it through insurance um, and or through a third party. Um, and that system might have fit way back when, when you know doctors knew what was best for you. But we have a completely different healthcare mm -hmm. delivery system now, uh, very patient centric and technologically diverse um, where this system is no longer functioning. Right. And, and, and so I think what you're talking about is the evolution of this fee for service model, but it's not really fee for service. It's fee for service with this middle entity in between called the insurance company. Um, right. And yeah, and when people talk about we don't like fee for service, we like this global payment because it, it's much easier to have a global payment in that model, right? Just have one size fits all, here's your fee, mm -hmm. that's it. But we, but that requires, that doesn't require transparency. In fact, if you put mm -hmm. transparency into that system, um, it takes it down. So we built this, you know, no fee for service model over the years, which has actually constructed a complex paying scheme 
that allows for lots of middlemen and no oversight. And every day, like they just mm -hmm. sued, CVS just got sued for data breaching and changing prices with PBMs, you know. So there's a lot of opacity in the system. Um, when, the, when you know, if there's a lot of opacity and there's a lot of money, what does it, what does it matter, <laughs> right? You just go to the doctor, you swipe your insurance card and you go leave, but that's not what's happening. All the right. costs are now shifting directly onto the patient. Um, mm -hmm. So, sort of like we can't we can't afford the lack of transparency anymore in the system um, because it's just it, you know it, it's just that we can't control where all the all the uh, you know all uh, where all the money's going.